Hey guys, it's uh, me again, Chandler Stevenson, here to do a report of Dr. Seuss and how his books and theatrical adaptions are actually brilliant learning tools for many kids and uh, actually all ages. Um, Dr. Seuss was given the opportunity to write what he pleased and have it blow up, allowing him to become one of the best children's authors in America. This is because of the simplicity of his books while also helping children learn a lot of new vocabulary as well as get a message across that you might not realize. Uh, first, however, I'm going to say my cited sources, and then I'll jump right into it. Uh, first is the textbook um, History of Theater by Brockett. Second is um, Dr. Seuss's Seussville.com. Third is Wikipedia. This is Dr. Seuss. Next is Dr. Seuss's biography at biography.com. And the last one is the introduction into the art of Dr. Seuss. Um, first, let's actually talk about who, who is Dr. Seuss. Um, he's an acclaimed writer. Uh, he was born with the name Theodore Geisel, Theodore Seuss Geisel, in Springfield, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, March 2nd, 1904, um, after he attended Dartmouth College and Oxford University. He, became a, he began a career in advertising. His advertising cartoons featured Quick, Henry, and The Flit. Uh, he appeared in several leading American magazines. Dr. Seuss's first children's book, titled And to Think That I Saw It on Mulberry Street, hit the market on 1937, changing the face of children's literature forever. It was actually rejected 27 times before it was finally published in, uh, by Vanguard Press in 1937. Following World War II, Geisel and his first wife, Helen, moved to La Jolla, California, where he wrote and published several children's books in the coming years, including If I Ran uh, the Zoo and Horton Hears a Who. It was a major turning point in Geisel's career when, uh, in response to 1954's Life magazine article that criticized children's reading level, companies asked him to write a children's book that had 220 vocabulary words, and that book resulted into The Cat in the Hat, uh, which was published in 1957, and um, it was described uh, by one critic as a tour de force. Uh, the success of The Cat in the Hat had cemented uh, Dr. Seuss's place in children's literature. Oh, fun fact, uh, in the late 1980s, he wanted to get his book, The Cat in the Hat, turned into a movie, and uh, his choices for um, the title character were actually Robin Williams, Steve Martin, and um, Eddie Murphy. I actually wish that could have happened because... Sadly, it wasn't my favorite movie in the world. Anyways, the magic behind Dr. Seuss's children's theater is that it can address the real-world problems with such a voca vocabulary and creativity that everyone, regardless of age, can understand the purpose and importance of each show. Seuss currently has over 60 books, and uh, each one tell a different story. Most important, I think his books have introduced millions of children to joys of reading, and the magic of wordplay. Uh, I know in the Lorax, there is two particular words, schloppity schlop and gluppity glup, that I now use sometimes from occasion. Like, there's glup over there. Just small things, you know, I picked up on, not a big deal. But uh, not only that, but also the messages behind each book are taught in creative ways. For example, the Lorax, it uh, deals with deforestation. And in my opinion, it's a quick and easy read as of all his books, but they also have such very strong meanings, such as Lorix is all about deforestation and someone can be careless and selfish to not care about the once they're cutting down the truffle trees. Uh, he's actually cutting down so many trees where he loses the home of the barbaloots, the fish, and the hummingbirds. And... Uh, it teaches a lesson that every kid can actually easily understand, and that's a big deal, because I know growing up, all I'd read was books as thick as my pinky, and usually those are books that have no meaning whatsoever, whereas Dr. Seuss and the genius he was created things that were able to teach real-world problems to children and really adults that possibly read them to them and created, I guess, a movement, I would say. Um, I'd say 
once his books started getting transitioned into plays, uh, it was a different outlet that created more ways for his message to get across. Uh, for example, I know Sue's Cool the Musical is three of Dr. Seuss's books combined. Um, it's uh, Horton, Here's a Who, uh, Horton Hatches the Egg, and Gertrude McFuzz. Um, these musicals, this musical was actually on Broadway in 2008, and based off Time Magazine, it was ranked the second most popular musical put on by high schools. And saying that, that just shows right there that people, it's, it's easy to put on these shows. Everybody can understand the plot. And a lot of people have read these books before. Um, I think you'd be crazy if you said you've never read a Dr. Seuss book. And it's something that every theater loves to do just because you can put as much creativity in it as you want because I think Dr. Seuss kind of didn't limit himself on how he wrote or what he allowed his illustrations to look like. Um, and in saying that, the adaption of his books to plays allows, in my opinion, uh, a different outlet for his message to get across. I think I said that earlier. In my opinion, I enjoy watching the plays more than actually reading a script. So whenever I see the play come to life, it, I don't know, gives you more definite visual and helps you understand the message. Uh, I know recently went to the Children's Theater Camp in Milledgeville, and we put on four Dr. Seuss plays. And uh, I had never actually understood, well, I never read one of them, but when I actually saw them put to life, it helped me understand the hidden message, I would say, a lot more now that I'm a little bit older. And I really wish I would have paid attention growing up. But I, I knew what they were about, but once they were put on stage and I was able to see it, I was actually in love with the story as well as I understood the problems more and uh, I think that's just amazing where just behind the creative words and the vocabulary he allows the set designer, the props, lights and everyone else on the technical side as well as the performers to create his message uh, which is his art come alive. Um, a play is obviously performed for an audience and I think an audience takes what is given to them from the performance and the technical side of the show. Dr. Seuss allows the creativity to be something different every time while addressing multiple different problems. Uh, the magic that he created with the children's theater is actually endless. With over the 60 books he's written, uh, it covers racism, uh, Adolf Hitler, uh, deforestation, I said that earlier, and carelessness and selfishness, and these are all traits that I feel like any child growing up needs to, not like Hitler, but like the carelessness and selfishness and all this kind of things, like something that needs to be addressed. And while the books, I think, help, I think once they were transitioned into place, the children's theater is something that allows everyone to understand it, I guess, more. That's just what my opinion because of how easy it is to uh, get a better audience. Maybe not a better audience, but it's an outlet. I'll just say that. Okay. Anyways, uh, while helping kids uh, reading and expanding their vocabulary, he puts magic on his stage to create the stronger outlet to allow the people to share his messages in ways many think he could not. That's probably the best sentence that I could have thought of to end it. Uh, in that case, Dr. Seuss, beautiful writer, increases my vocabulary every day. He's the man. Thank you.